Hello everyone, this is Chris from Chris Trains with tutorial number two for the ICNG. And in this tutorial we're going to talk about some of the lighting functions of the train, both inside and out. I just want to start by talking about one of the game options, which is very often turned on by default. If you look at these controls here, you can see they have a glow effect around them. Also the reverser button and some of the components of the speedometer, they have this sort of halo effect around the outside. This is something called adaptive lighting bloom. It's a function of the game that you can turn on and off. Honestly, for the displays to look the best they can, I would always have this function turned off. So if you use keyboard shortcut shift control F1, you can turn the adaptive lighting bloom off. So that's what it looks like turned on and that's what it looks like turned off. So let's talk about some of the cab lighting functions. Obviously at the moment I'm sitting in a completely dark cab. If I use the keyboard shortcut control F11, it brings on the main cab lighting, which is these big floodlights at the back here that light up the whole cab. You can now also see on the right hand side of the console here the three different lighting controls. This is the cab lighting, Control F11, again, turns that on and off, or you can use the mouse to drag that switch on and off. This control here can be toggled on and off using Control F12, and this is the instrument lights. So Control F12 to turn those on and off. And this is also a dimmer, so you can use the mouse to pick any level of lighting that you want for those particular lights. The third lighting control is a reading light. Uh, this doesn't actually have a keyboard shortcut, but if you drag this middle light button here, you can see it brings on a reading light in the center part of the driver's console. So let's just turn that off again. And turn the console lights off. Actually, let's just keep those on. So for the main exterior lighting of the train, the headlights and tail lights, these are all controlled using these two buttons in front of the driver. The right hand button controls the configuration of the lights and the left hand button is the beam selection. So at the moment the lights are off. If I use the keyboard shortcut H, it turns the lights on. And if we look on the outside of the train, you can see this is the standard configuration of headlights for the ICNG. You can also see on the right hand multifunction display that there are icons here that show you the configuration of the external lights. So on the front of the train, three white lights, and on the rear of the train, two red lights. If you take the light selector switch and move it to this position, this is the shunting light position. Again, you can see on the multifunction display here, it shows just the top light is on on the front and back of the train. And you can see this here, just the top light. The third position for the switch is the danger or warning position. This puts the two tail lights and the one center light on, on the front and rear of the train. So this is the danger or warning light configuration. The normal driving configuration is the number one position here. The beam selection controls the brightness of the headlights, so at the moment the normal driving configuration for the ICNG is this position here. So you have all three lights on, middle brightness. If you change this to low beam, now you have all three lights on low beam. And if you now change this to one of the high beam settings, it brings on an extra set of lights, so you now have brighter lights on the lower two headlight units and the top center one is now its dim setting. And if we go to full, full beams, everything is now at its brightest setting. So you have the brightest headlights and the brightest top marker light. Again, the standard driving position in the ICNG is to have the headlights in this position here. Finally, as well as the cab lighting, you can, tr you can control the passenger area lighting in this train. You can see this icon on the multifunction display shows that the passenger area lighting is currently turned on. 
You can see that on the outside of the train, where the wagon lights are on. And if we jump into the passenger view, you can see the passenger area is lit up nicely. If we go to this multifunction display and pick soft key 0 for the menu, and then soft key 7 for lighting, you can now see the lighting controls for the passenger area. In the real train, these controls actually allow you to set different levels of brightness for the lighting and different colors. For the sake of simplicity and due to some of the limitations of the game, this is really just an on-off switch. So if you use soft key number one, you can see this icon now shows that the passenger area lighting is turned off. If you look at the outside of the train, you can see no wagon lights. And if we jump into the passenger view, you can see the passenger view is dark. If we come back to this and use any of the on positions, so soft key 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, these will all turn the passenger area lighting back on, which you can see indicated by this little icon here. From the outside, it's lit up. And from the inside, the passenger area lighting is now turned back on. So this concludes tutorial number two for the ICNG, which was basic lighting control.